We've had this conversation and you seem to agree with me But when there's complications G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative And welcome to a new month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle Where we take the supplies from the Art Snacks March 2023 plus box Experiment with them to within an inch of their lives And then hopefully create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge My fun fact for this month is I am deathly afraid of space I don't like talking about space, I don't like thinking about space But every now and again I will watch some space themed or related video Just to see if I'm still that afraid of it And plot twist, I still am So never talk to me about space please Let's get into the box and see what we have to play with today here is the Art Snacks Plus box for March 2023. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap that little green burrito and take a closer look at what we'll be playing with today. First up in the Plus box, we have the Lennox Cotton Paper Pad by Legion Paper, size 9 by 12 inches. We also have a set of five Sakura Jelly Roll metallic pens. We'll be using Royal Talon's Extra Fine Gouache. I had the color Yellow Ochre, as well as an Art Alternatives Water Brush, a Tombow Fudenosuke Twin Tip Brush Pen in black and gray, as well as two Derwent Chromaflow colored pencils. I had Scarlet and Lilac. We have our snack and our sticker, and we have an extra special 10th anniversary sticker as well. Let's get everything set up and start experimenting. I had a lot to play with this month, so I've got my little art snacks menus here and I'm gonna read out some of the information about the supplies that we'll be using in the video. The paper pad, first up, made in the USA, Lennox paper is 100% cotton and works wonderfully across a range of fine art applications, especially colored pencils, graphite, pastels, and charcoal. Designed to withstand both delicate and bold impressions, this 250 GSM paper is sturdy and absorbent. You'll find 15 sheets in this pad, each featuring a softly textured white surface. It is a nice, not super bright white, it's just kind of like a nice white standard. Uh, it is 250 GSM, which is, you know, sturdy enough to hold up to your wet applications. It's also slightly thinner than what I would typically use for watercolor, but that kind of helps for me because I put a lot of stuff into journals, so I'm doing watercolor and it's not in my journal already. Hopefully it doesn't bulk up too much, <laughs> even though it's slightly different. Sometimes those things matter. 100% um, cotton. This paper stayed wet for a really long time. I know that sometimes the, you know, the room temperature and the humidity around your workstation can kind of affect that, but I found this one was like a little bit different with like how long the water stayed soaked into the page. So I imagine that for watercolor works where you're being really, you know, modeled and you really want all that soft blurring and you need the page to stay wet for longer, this would be a good paper for that. Uh, definitely something that stood out to me. Sakura Jelly Roll Metallic Pens, the set of five. Time to shine, Sakura Jelly Roll metallic pens feature gleaming polished colors that work well on both light and dark surfaces. We tested that on this sheet as well and they did. The gel ink glides on smoothly and won't feather or bleed through most paper. It's also archival so your work and the metallic sheen will last for years to come. Enjoy this set of five shimmery hues. Uh, so we did test those out there. They do slightly move with water, not a ton. Um, and I know that it says it won't feather and bleed, but I always do that wet application if I can. And these definitely feather in the water, which is what I want. I, I like to see that, that's something that I enjoy. Funnily enough, the pencils didn't do that, which at first I thought these were uh, watercolor pencils. These really shocked me, these pencils, <laughs> but it was so bizarre. They worked perfectly fine through the water and they actually were just like a lighter version of the color. It was really bizarre. I don't know what happened, what was happening there. I don't know if that's just something unique to these pencils or if other ones would do it, but we'll get to the pencils in a second. Really enjoyed those uh, metallic pens. They do have a beautiful metallic sheen to them. And I made a little faux watercolor out of them as well, but it was very, very light. There's not a, it's not a really, really, really heavy concentration of uh, dye ink in there. So it wasn't going to spread as much as, I guess like a big brush pen full of metallic ink, which is fine. These are pens with all the experimentation we do. I'm just trying to see like what it could do if I, if I only had these supplies, right? And that's the whole point of the Art Snacks Challenge. I only can use the supplies in the box. But say, you know, I went out on a little field trip <laughs> to a coffee store. I just had my little pencil case and these supplies in there. How much could I really do? What could I really get away with? How mixed media could I get? And it's actually surprising sometimes just how 
like the wide range of applications you can do with just a few limited art supplies. I think that's obviously the thing that this whole series has been about the whole time, but it still shocks me to this day some of the applications and how different supplies work, or I use a different brand and it's made slightly differently and you know, you do another technique that you've done 20 times before, but it just works really differently all of a sudden. It's always a nice little surprise. So that's why we test it all, but not everything has to work, just, uh, just putting that out there. Like, <laughs> I don't have to be able to make a watercolor with the Jelly Roll pens to be like, oh, they're good. You know what I mean? Like, we're never gonna judge it up against the, the tests we do. For all intents and purposes, all of the supplies work the way that they're intended to work. We're just looking for all those secondary, those tertiary applications. Which, uh, yeah, even today, I got really carried away with the heat tool. For those of you who don't know, that's a heat tool. No, it did not come in the box. Um, it's just, I hate watching paint dry. I'm very impatient. Watching paint dry is like watching paint dry to me. It's just terrible. It's terribly boring. So I use a heat tool, which I don't always recommend. Sometimes you can scorch your pigments. It can really warp your paper like crazy. Sometimes you might even start a paper on fire <laughs> if you're not careful enough it's wild like the heat tool gets really hot um but yeah i use it all the time just thought i'd keep it in the video today usually i cut all that out so you can't see it but i get very impatient <laughs> the yeah so the metallic pens there you can see they work well on the black they worked well on the white too obviously i love metallic pens i think uh i think ballpoint pens like gel pens all those kinds of pens I think are very underrated in the mixed media art world. I use them all the time. They're obviously not the most light fast things, but this one say that they are. They're well, not light fast, archival. So that is a kind of a, a big bold claim for a <laughs> like a any kind of pen really. But yeah, I was happy to see that because I put them into all of my work. And a lot of fine detail work I do in mixed media, I will use gel pens for, like doing little lashes on eyes or getting all that detail into the iris if I really want to put lots of bold colors there. I have metallic, I have neon, I have white gel pens, I love those. All kinds of gel pens. So if you haven't got any gel pens, or if you've got some from back in high school when you used to draw and doodle all over your notebooks, crack them out for your mixed media work because I feel like they're very underrated, I feel. Anyway, a little carried away there. Let's keep moving on. Oh, I made a shading brush with the Art Alternatives water brush, and I had to mix so much of that ink with the uh, Tombow brush pen. It was fine. It was totally worth it. Obviously, skip yourself all that drama and just put some waterproof uh, black ink and water into the brush pen rather than trying to make it out of your pen. But again, we're just trying to see what would I do if I only had these supplies. And that shading brush pen became the big hero of our final piece today, which I've actually started already. It's on the page. I know usually I just clear this page and we start again. We start from fresh. We used to even thumbnail sketches out. Look, we're changing everything over here slowly but surely. <laughs> the whole format of uh, box freestyle is going to have changed and no one will notice. But I got really carried away with this little illustration. I kept going and going and going and I was so in love with it that I felt like this should be my final piece. So you'll see what happens. Let's get through some more of the art snacks menu. We have the Royal Talons Extra Fine Gouache. Uh, get ready for an opaque paint with a high pigment load. Royal Talons Extra Fine Gouache is a unique gouache that becomes more fluid as it's mixed, allowing you to cover large areas evenly. It dries quickly within minutes and uniformly to a velvety matte finish. You'll want to thin this paint with water to achieve smoothness and consistency. Yes, watercolor, uh, you can use gouache to make watercolor very easily, just really thin it out with water. I wasn't intentionally going for anything super smooth and flat and even today. I was actually just using it just for the color and the texture, which I do like to kind of force in there with some extra water and just being really streaky with it. So don't be looking for a really smooth, flat application from me today, but it's a beautiful gouache and I love the color, that yellow ochre. It's a really, really rich color. The water brush has that big square uh, tip, which I actually kind of find uh, useful. I, I don't really have too many like that, and that does cover a lot of area quickly, which is nice for big background stuff. I imagine that if you're painting on plein air, like it would be a really great water brush to have. Also, I um, made the shading brush out of it, which, you know, fill it with any color ink. I always suggest that if you're going to do one of those, make sure it's a waterproof, like, or it's at least full like you can layer it right like you can layer it and it's not gonna disturb the layer underneath it so it's got to be some kind of waterproof ink uh but then dilute it with some water ironically <laughs> and make a gray out of it because you can see the shading that i did on my piece was actually just 
layer after layer of that water brush and you can build it up really slowly so that you can really focus on getting the right values in your shading and it becomes it's just like using a pencil to shade really but you're using a water brush and it's kind of a different effect but also I just think it's really really valuable to put in quick shading as well if you're someone that does urban sketching it can be really great uh, someone that does any kind of sketching really I've just always found a good value for that and I like the flat square brush to it it makes you a little less precise and I sometimes think that when you have the ability to control something too much uh, sometimes you actually get caught up in trying to control it too much so that's why sometimes I'll use different techniques like holding my pencil really far back so I can just stay loose uh, or choosing a brush size that's too big to paint with because then I can't control it too much so I don't tend to fuss as much so this is a, a good uh, art brush for that just says paint anywhere, anytime. This water brush from Art Alternatives features flexible nylon bristles and a squeezable barrel. Fill it up with water, ink, or any other wet medium you'd like and watch the liquid flow evenly and effortlessly from the tip. You can also mix a little bit of the gouache in there too and make it kind of like a tinted uh, little layering shadow brush. The Tombow uh, pen, the, the brush pen, the black gray, Add another dimension to your artwork with the Tombow Fudenoske Twin Tip Brush Pen. It has two different colors of water-based pigmented ink, black and gray. The flexible brush tips produce fine lines to medium strokes. Absolutely beautiful little brush pen. Uh, I do love those slightly flexible tips that are really small. I don't love anything too, well, I shouldn't say that, I do. Um, but I, I tell people like the longer and the more flexible the, the brush pen, people tend to have a lot harder of a time with it. So if you're just kind of a beginner or you find brush pens really difficult, ones with tips like this that are just a little bit flexible, but they're very short, those tend to be the easiest ones to use. And I love a good bit of line weight variation in my work. The gray is also an added bonus to have that on the other end. Just like with the shading brush, you can use that for your shadows. And then a staff favorite, the Derwent Chroma Flow colored pencils. I'd never used these before, and I have to say, when I first picked them up, they're slightly thinner than most colored pencils I have. And I thought they were gonna be really, really hard. Like the, the lead looks really, really hard. I'll read this first. Lay down the smooth, vibrant color with Derwent Chroma Flow pencils. Formulated with rich pigments, they make blending, layering, and shading a breeze. Their premium core strength can handle pressure when in use or sharpened. So, I, I don't know, there was something about the look of them that made them look like they had really hard lead. And then when I used them, it was actually really smooth. And it's not buttery soft like an oil-based pencil. It may have some oil base in it. I'm not quite sure what the... Uh, you know what the chemical makeup of that pencil is but chroma flow also made me think they were water soluble which they're not at all they had that interesting property of being able to you know draw completely fine through the water which i thought was interesting um but yeah the the pencil themselves were just very very smooth very very soft and a beautiful like pigment load like very very intense and rich so I was very impressed with those and I do not need any more colored pencils but I will be having a look <laughs> just to see I don't know fingers crossed someone's getting rid of an old set and they're half used and cheap and maybe I can uh, give them a new home but yeah I was very interested in those chroma flow pencils this worked really beautifully I also love the color red so uh, lucky me getting the scarlet and that purple too was really really beautiful I overall, I think all the supplies that I got, I really lucked out with the colors uh, in the box because they kind of worked in a really interesting way for me this month. And I was very, very happy to just keep playing. I, I You can see I literally finished this piece on the page. And then I thought, well, am I gonna do this again? Like, I really like this. And chances are, I'm not gonna be able to replicate this as well as I've just done it. Cause I really, really love it. <laughs> so I, uh, I did a first, I did a first for me over on box freestyle I just cut it straight off my experimentation page which part of me is like oh no because I, I have all of them kind of stored together and it's kind of like a nice little museum of my art snacks box freestyle experiment pages but then also I remembered like one of them was on the back of like remember we did the, the wood panel I had to do all the tests on the back so I was like well I guess they're not all here it's fine but I kept the scraps off to the side I stapled them together and it will be it'll be my little memory of these tests but I just cut that piece out and then stuck it onto a new page I was like I'm gonna collage this right in the middle and then keep working on it and it came out 
so unexpected. Like I did not start thinking of this idea. I did not start uh, with any kind of a plan in mind. It was just going with the flow and being experimental. And I am absolutely thrilled with how this came out. I think it's a very visually appealing kind of aesthetic. The idea that these creatures are all flying in and around, in, out and around. And even at the bottom of the piece, I kind of had some disappearing underneath the added layer. And I feel like it just worked. I don't really know what to say beyond very happy accident. <laughs> and if you are looking for, uh, if you're looking for something to try today, please have a go at this. I think it's really fun. If you look closely at the creatures, none of them really make sense. They're all just kind of wild little doodles. And I even put another version of that uh, kind of down in the bottom left hand corner. I will say halfway through drawing all these little creatures, there was an idea of what this piece kind of represents to me that came to mind. And so I did kind of put some of that story in there. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I'm gonna keep it very personal and private to me. Some of my inner thoughts that were coming out, but that is what art is all about really. Just putting yourself into it, you know, trying your best, enjoying the art supplies, but also allowing some room for spontaneity and for ideas just to create themselves. And just being really happy. If, if it was only a happy accident that happened once, then we'll just enjoy that. But I had a great time today. I will see you in a second for the outro. There we go. That is our final piece for this month. I hope you enjoyed watching that video. If you would like to join Art Snacks, you can do so using the code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off. And if you would like to share your work with this, please use the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge on social media and in the mixed community so we can enjoy what you come up with this month. Until next time, bye.